Hi, this is a video about energy in simple harmonic motion, and it relates to Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook, Chapter 13, uh, Section 3. So let's talk about the total energy of a spring that's in simple harmonic motion. We know that the kinetic energy of something um, is, we can find the kinetic energy of something by using the formula 1 half mv squared. We take the velocity, we square it, we multiply it by the mass of the thing that's moving and take half of that, and that tells us the kinetic, the moving energy, the kinetic energy of something, in this case a spring. We know from, I think it's chapter 7 of, in, Young, in Young and Friedman, that the potential energy of a spring mm -hmm. is one half the spring constant k times the displacement uh, squared. So whatever potential energy a spring has at a particular point uh, depends on how its displacement, how far it is from its resting point, squared times the spring constant by half. Well, since the total energy of something in simple harmonic motion is basically the sum of the kinetic and potential energy, now, we're assuming a theoretical situation here, one that doesn't actually exist in reality, but we can approximate it. Um, you know, there's, we're assuming there's no friction here. And we're assuming that this spring will go on forever, back and forth and back and forth. That, that's not true. It doesn't happen. But, but it can be close enough, uh, uh, or a close enough approximation uh, that we can say that the total energy of this simple harmonic motion system is simply the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. By the way, it, we can figure out the total energy of this system because when, when it reaches its, its uh, maximum am amplitude, when, or when it reaches its, its positive amplitude, uh, when it's moved away from its resting point to its positive amplitude, I think it's, I'm doing this in a way that I think you'll see it right. I have to do it the reverse in the video for you to see it right. But when it, when it comes to its positive amplitude, uh, all of its energy is in potential energy, so it's stretched as far as it will go without overstretching it. So we can find out what the maximum energy of the system is by substituting A in for X, by taking the, the A and putting it into this equation, because when it's at its maximum, when it's at its amplitude, positive amplitude, then all of its energy is in potential energy. And so we can say that all the energy of the system is one-half K A squared. And so basically that tells us what the total energy of this system is. At any point in the in the oscillation, in the back and forth, boing, 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 um, if you take whatever the kinetic energy is at that point, one-half mv squared, and add it to whatever the potential energy is at that point, one-half kx squared, it's going to equal the total energy of the system, which is one-half K A squared. Now, knowing this helps us solve uh, for, say, the velocity um, when we don't know the time. What, what we've been able to do, and not me, people a lot smarter than me, basically took this equation and solved for v squared uh, and then took the square root of it to get v and, and they were left with this equation here. A v equals plus or minus. It's plus or minus because you know when you have a v squared you can get to a v squared e either by, by squaring a negative or by squaring a positive. And so you'll have to use your common sense to know whether the V is positive or negative. Basically, if the V is on the, the positive displacement side, you know, um, um, and moving toward, you know, the amplitude, then, it's, then the V is positive. Um, uh, actually, anywhere where the V is moving toward the positive amplitude, the V is going to be positive. And any place where the V is moving away, uh, from the po from the positive amplitude, uh, the v is going to be uh, negative. But anyway, um, so uh, you'll have to use your common sense to know whether the v is positive or negative. But v equals positive or negative, the square root of the constant over the mass, times the square root of the amplitude squared minus uh, the displacement squared. So there you have a formula for velocity that doesn't use time. This is this is something that in my limited exposure to physics, uh, I've come to realize that often physicists cleverly uh, can solve things by con taking energy into account rather than by using the old you know, time formulas. Richard Feynman, um, a brilliant uh, physicist of the 20th century, Richard Feynman did this with, with the atom and with atomic kinds of things. He solved for things by taking the energy approach uh, at, rather than the kind of standard time you know, approach and so forth. 
anyway, that's an aside. Um, so here's an alternative formula for velocity uh, of, a, of a, a simple harmonic motion thing uh, that you can use when you don't know the time. So basically you look at what you're given in a problem and use whatever formula you know is most helpful given what you're given. Now, by the way, you can find out what the maximum velocity is by setting x to 0 because uh, the, the vo velocity is going to be at its maximum um, when it's going through the, the, the resting point and then it will, uh, you know, it will of course increase uh, or uh, decrease as it's, as it's going um, in one direction or the other. Okay, so if we take the, the displacement as 0 uh, at the resting point before it's stretched one way or another, uh, then it reduces then to a squared, and the square root of a squared is a. So basically it comes down um, to this as the equation for the maximum velocity. Well, the square root of k over m is simply the angular frequency, so we can also say that the maximum velocity is omega times a. So anyway, there you have um, some alternative equations that you can use that are derived basically uh, from an energy approach to simple harmonic motion. Not well drawn, but let me, uh, let me reproduce a diagram uh, that shows visually the relationship between kinetic and potential energy in simple uh, harmonic motion. So here's the, the basic spring setup. This is the where the, it's zero. Um, here's where we have positive amplitude and negative amplitude. So it's going boing, 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 boing. When it's at um, the, the zero point, um, then we have maximum velocity and we have everything is in um, basically uh, kinetic energy. So that all of the energy, here's the formula, can energy total energy equals k kinetic plus u potential. So all the energy is in kinetic energy um, when it's at the resting point. When it's at either the positive amplitude or the negative amplitude, there is no kinetic energy because it, it reaches the point and stops. Um, and so this upside down parabola, as it were, uh, tells us how the kinetic energy goes. Meanwhile, the potential energy is at, is at its maximum uh, when it's at the positive amplitude and it's, it's at its negative Amp, uh, uh, maximum when it's at the negative amplitude. So you can see as the as the kinetic energy uh, increases, the potential energy decreases, and as the potential energy increases, the kinetic energy uh, decreases. Maximum kinetic at the origin, and then um, uh, zero potential when it's at its origin as well. Uh, this is supposed. This is the halfway where it's half and half. I didn't draw it well, so it doesn't look like it's at the, the half energy point, but there's a point here where it's half kinetic and half uh, potential. Well, there you have it. Um, some material from uh, Young and Friedman's discussion of energy in simple harmonic motion.